Hi, um, I'm speaking to you through another body, as I am, alas, in Brussels at the moment, with several bodily impairments called infections, ending in itis. Nothing too dramatic, it will pass, yet I am quite sad to miss LGM. Hello everyone I know there. Hi LGM. So this session is a report of a work session that happened in Spain in March 2016. In collaboration with Media Lab Prado, Constant organized the work session Objects in Common as the final event in a series that started in 2015 with Funcionamentos, Objects in Common and Diverse Bodies, followed by Interactivos, Material Cultures in the Digital Age, and Grigri Pixel, Makers and Energy in African Cities. The series Objectos Communes wants to explore other ways of doing, such as design for functional di diversity, situated digital manufacturing in, for example, African cities. It takes making ordinary common objects as a point of departure. During the week of the 7th to 12th of March 2016, 20 to 25 makers and thinkers have looked at the potential but also at the problems of sharing practices, processes of manufacturing and the documentation of physical objects. Taking both the permission to reproduce and the availability of source files as a given, there are still many questions to ask about the actual commonness of digital objects and their potential physical life or afterlife. We documented the session in several ways. A first version of the raw archive of the event can be found on uh, the website of Wendy, I think, uh, capacitor.constantvzw.org. Um, I can post a link, actually. Well, I'll post the link later. Uh, and I lost the PDF. There it is. So who was there? How, what, and why? On the website, there is a booklet with all the participants, uh, including a small questionnaire. The biggest part of the participants were Belgians uh, from Fab Labs, Hackerspaces, Makerspaces, and other wo who all are makers, hackers, thinkers themselves. Another part came from Spain, quite diverse, from Madrid, Barcelona, working around recycling and reuse or reappropriation of uh, objects, uh, organizing documentation, etc. One of the reasons we did the work session in Media Lab at the moment was the possibility to link up with totally different structures and ways of doing, linked to the Grigri Pixel project. The two weeks before our work session, four people invited by Media Lab were there working on their own projects around cost energy and lighting built within a community. Through specific funding and alas laborious visa procedures, which all luckily succeeded, we had Koku Elolo Amegayibo from Lome Togo, Mamadou Ngom, better known as Modu Ngom from Dakar, Senegal, and Mamadou Koulibaly from Bamako, Mali, and Zineb El Fasiki from Casab Casablanca, Morocco. We had five work days and five themes. So um, the first day, Monday, was uh, talking about spaces and relations, uh, space being uh, Fab Labs, hackerspaces, making spaces, and the relations that can happen inside those spaces. Uh, the second day was about repositories, sharing platforms, and documentation, whether manuals or videos. So what we did is we did a round table to see how everyone in those spaces or practices were dealing with that. The third day, we looked at resources, materials, and relations, and especially there was a presentation on e-waste. Uh, not uh, actually, a, what I found interesting is that, and here I speak as Julian, um, is that it was not about e-waste analysis in uh, the context of Africa, or not only Africa, but also e-waste uh, in, uh, in Spain, actually. Uh, there is a, a problem locally there also. Um, then the fourth day was about licenses and the relation they introduce. 
And then the final day was about digital to physical, physical, the file formats, the vectors, the limitations of transforming, and etc. So the raw written documentation of these themes is also available day by day. We wrote on a local server with Etherpad. Thank you, Michael. Can you please give me the name of that project? Did you Etherdump, that, that's what it's called. So it was a local Etherpad uh, on, hosted on a Raspberry Pi on a local network, and that's what was used uh, locally. Um, you can find an HTML version of the notes, including the authorship colors and spelling chaos galore. Uh, on top of that, there was quite a linguistic soup in the making because some people spoke English and Dutch, some only French, some French and English, some Spanish and English, and some mostly Spanish. As the group was quite large, we worked with questions and challenges. You can see them reproduced in the pads, a kind of collective brainstorm, semi-constructed writing process. Basically, I can go on describing what we did, what we talked about, but I not, do not feel ready to make a general conclusion. This is not over, and the information still needs to be and is being processed instead. Uh, is being processed. Instead, two topics really struck out for me. I think Julian and Anne, who were in, uh, at this work session, too, can confirm this. Confirm this. Is Anne here? I oh, know she's gone. So there's two topics uh, that um, I would like to distill these two topics in a thinking moment with you. And I don't know how much time do we have. Five minutes? Okay. Um, so she has. Um, I have prepared, sorry, it's hard to <laughs> switch. Uh, I have prepared two etherpads, and I would like you to answer them from your point of view. No idea who's in the room, but here it goes. Uh, copy these questions and fill your version, or do this out loud with the person who's reading this, and log it here. So, um, uh, why is it doing this? I Okay, so those are, those are the two Etherpad links. Uh, so there are pad.constant, you know that, slash public underscore pad, OIC for objects in common underscore LGM underscore doc or underscore LGM underscore data. But the questions, and I think we can maybe s talk about it out loud. By the way, she is in the chat of uh, the one of the pad, so get on there to talk to her. Um, yeah, there she is. And for me, I don't have text to speech, but <laughs> um, so I'm going to read out loud the questions, and I guess we can maybe start interacting live around this. And I have one that I really would like a feed—I mean, a feedback and even a solution, if that's possible. Um, so the first one: um, How can a community be stimulated to document? Um, how do you experience this? Is in your own practice? And even diehard FabLab wiki fans are thinking about switching to something like Instructables because there, there is a community and it points and it points out incompleteness, things not working, etc. Do you have a, any experience with it or any other ideas? And the other question is: uh, In documentation, can, can there be special attention for the sizes of files? A lightweight version, for example, for PDFs. Local mirrors for software in Africa are often only in the South Africa. Is it possible to provide local repositories for software in other countries or try to take this into account, including support for other languages? And I'd like to come back to that point. Um, there are often informal documentation or software exchanges, copy sessions in Togo between friends and s of a specific network. Are there ways to get information in an uh, inert USB hard drive? Uh, state to specific people in countries where the postal system is unreliable, uh, that are on demand and shipped by a network of trusted people, any other ideas. Uh, and I'd like to, actually that's one of the topics that I was really touched by uh, when I met these, um, these people from, uh, uh, especially the guys from Mali, Togo. Um, so internet data is totally unreliable. A really funny thing, and I'm going to ask it as a question, is uh, because they they made fun of us with this one, and that was really funny, is how many of you know about the snake game on YouTube? Raise your hand. One, two, three. 
Do you know why there is a snake game on YouTube? It's because in countries where the, the, the internet is so slow that you have to go take a coffee um, to actually be able to watch a five minutes video on YouTube, there is a snake game if you press the right arrow key while the video is loading, which none of us can do uh, mostly, uh, then there's a snake game you can start playing in, in the window. And so you had these three guys laughing at us because none of us knew that this existed. Um, so that was a very enjoyable moment. Um, but I, I think it, this gives me, uh, I mean, yeah, this gives uh, like uh, a clear example of, of what's going on. The other thing that I found really sad is that one of them was Choosy's provider, internet service provider, which was not the cheapest or anything, because that was the only one that was offering um, a repository of, of software for Ubuntu. You know, so when you do your update your system, you know, we, we do this as a breeze. It takes a couple of minutes to download the security packages and all that. But there, it might take, they do this usually when they leave work and they hope that they, when they come back in the morning, it's done. Um, and he uses, I mean, he paid this ISP because the ISP runs on Ubuntu, so they have the packages locally, so he can benefit from that. But I think as a free software community, there's a big responsibility here because we think that we're doing free, I mean, I think, sorry, uh, that we do free software uh, because we can then transfer this knowledge to um, developing countries. But if they don't have any way to access it, uh, I mean, this is going in, in the clouds, you know, and not in a, in a real factual uh, situation. So I'd be happy to hear if you have any Comments, suggestions. questions. So maybe we can take that up for our five minutes uh, left. Uh, to discuss, but first an applause for Wendy Julien. <laughs> so, any comments or responses to these questions that came up? Uh, hi, this is, yeah, it's more a comment than a question. I, uh, I spent a while working in Tanzania with uh, schools and internet access and free software there. And uh, the big, yeah, internet speed was obviously a huge problem. But the, the slow point wasn't within Tanzania, it was between Tanzania and the outside world. The mobile phone companies could provide huge amounts of bandwidth within the country itself. Um, and they were perfectly willing to do that if they had a reason to. Um, so we, uh, there were uh, one of the projects we were doing, putting uh, Linux computers in schools, and they provided free bandwidth for everything. Basically, we were running virtual desktops over their network, and they were perfectly happy with that, and the network could support it. Um, yeah, so it's the speed issue isn't within the country; it's between the country. It's the outside line, basically, the internet. Um, yeah, that's just a comment. No, but exactly. Um, it depends from one country to another because I understood that Mali, for example, is connected to uh, the Senegal, which then connects to Spain as with an underwater cable. So everything that all their communication goes from Mali and Senegal goes to Spain, and that's where they get their Ubuntu, Ubuntu server when they want to update it or Debian or whatever. Um, but it's true that inside the countries themselves, uh, it's there is there is network. That's why, I don't know if it, it came up to me, like, shouldn't we, as a free software community, find a solution to have servers running there, which can be somehow hosting packages so that um, they have an easier way of updating, updating their, their systems? But that's my, my take on this. I mean, it's a... Wendy's presentation is about a broader issue and it's about objects in common. I'm, I'm just, I was just ping-pointing this. I don't want to hijack uh, her presentation or, or the subject here, but... Um. We have another question. So it's not a question, but uh, maybe a hint. Um, I, I haven't tested myself, but uh, some people from Holland made Superglue, uh, this uh, kind of server that you plug into your electric plug. 
in as I understood it is a promise to go back to host yourself your own website but we had having a huge uh, computer making noise and heat uh, in a in your little space uh, so maybe it's also a way to serve um, software packages uh, and everybody could have this little thing but of course it's also a uh, matter to buy to post uh, the snail mail and uh, okay. one example I can and can also give which was very um, I mean for me it was really full of um, I mean, very interesting is that so we we run around about these open source projects about like you know making like your own 3D printer and or your own knitting machine or the fact is there's a lot of artisans locally doing a lot of stuff so there was this question why would we need something like this but beyond that let's say okay there's an interesting open source project using Arduino or something like this finding an Arduino in Africa is mission impossible I mean no online store will accept a visa payment coming from Africa so that means they cannot order anything and get anything delivered so the way they do it is that they find someone who's traveling abroad and then they ask them to uh, order and then bring back the Arduino or the equipment they're, they're ne needing. For all the rest of the electronics, finding capacitors or whatever, uh, uh, basic electronics, it's kind of easy but in a sense that what they do is that they go up to uh, the local guy that goes scrapes uh, landfills and they go with a picture on a phone saying, I need that equipment and then they pay up front and then they wait and they wait three weeks maybe or two months until the guy during his research in, in the landfills he's not interested into electronics at all but then since he has an incest in here uh, uh, yeah some something to find then he will come back with the piece at, at a certain point that's the reality of, of Africa and dealing with open source hardware With that story, we end Wendy's Julian's presentation. <laughs> you know where to find them. So if you have ideas or comments, uh, please leave them uh, with them. Thank you very much. Thank you.